so with that introduction let's get to the talk for today uh, so today's talk is brought to us by navin kumar muguda who has vast experience in the field of uh, software uh, de developing both products and platforms so he uh, graduated uh, with a bachelor of engineering degree uh, computer science from uh, bangalore university subsequently he got a master of science again from computer science uh, from the north carolina state university so he started his career in uh, ibm as a software engineer like many of us and from that point uh, he rose up to become a lead engineer and then principal engineer and eventually today he works as an architect if you look at his uh, look at the companies he has worked for uh, he started with ibm but uh, later he moved to fair isaac yahoo adobe apg then flipkart target linkedin and most recently with salesforce so all are uh, big names in the industry so you can imagine the extent of his experience and involvement in uh, you know building products so today anybody can write code especially with tools like chat gpt but what uh, makes a difference is can you build software which is reliable highly available which is which can scale beautifully which can give ultra low latency for streaming applications so these are the some some of the things in which navin has worked on so with that uh, short introduction uh, i will uh, pass it over to navin to take it further uh, thanks for the wonderful introduction arvin um folks let's get started the uh, fourth is going to be a, a collaborative session feel free to jump in with your questions at any point of time uh, can you see my screen yes yeah i, I can, can see, see your screen, screen. yeah folks <laughs> arvind has posted a link to the slide deck in the q and a session so You can use it to face yourself if required. Now, theory without practice is empty. Practice without theory, this strongly resonates. Uh, folks, can uh, everybody else go on mute? There's a lot of disturbance. So people can go on mute. Yes, thanks. Okay. so the theory without practice is empty and practice without theory is blind strongly resonates with how i think it is important to think about many aspects of software development while we write uh, you can check out my prof linkedin profile over here as well as my um, um, medium profile where i post uh, my ideas uh folks why do we use types why do we use types as a question yes what does types buy us as programmers so in layman terms uh, to prepare the system to accommodate the data okay okay let's more let me um, pose a more pointed question what is the difference between dynamically typed languages and uh, statically typed languages what benefits do statically typed languages provide us so during I compile time be... we can uh, figure out the errors yes so early detection of problems is one of the reasons why statically type is uh, one of the benefits of statically type languages here's an example the example on the left is from python so x plus 5 results in a uh, runtime exception the same equivalent code in java will not compile hence we identify and fix this issue much earlier in the software development cycle folks uh, assume that the two methods both are calculating fibonacci numbers so one returns the number and other does a void which of these two are easier to unit test and why
Okay, I'm not sure, but probably the first one which returns because then you can check the return value with assert statement. Yes. The second no, no. one, we don't know where where it is, whether it's updating a global variable or some internal state. We don't know where it, the result is stored. Great uh, answer, Arvind. So to test the second incarnation, you need to open up the code and do a white box, uh, understand the code and do more of white box testing, while the one on the left can be done on a black box testing. Now, here's uh, two implementation of Fibonacci uh, number calculation. The one on the left has a bug. If n equals one, the result is not being set. The one on the right, uh, so the compiler will not help us with the program on the left. But when it comes to program on the right, if this were to be omitted, the compiler will com will complain. This is another manifestation of early detection of problems, which is what, as we discussed earlier, is beneficial. Uh, I'll talk about, uh, I'll keep toggling between code and uh, my slide deck in this presentation. Now, the earlier, uh, till uh, um, before Java 12, switch was available as statements. Statements are, uh, don't return values, while expressions return values. So, this is a the ternary operator is a expression while the if else they are statements so java realized this and they provide uh, they uh, provide us expression version of switch here's a So here's a uh, manifestation of this. I have implemented the Fibonacci numbers via the switch expression. If it is zero, it returns zero. If it is one, it returns one, else it returns. So if I were to omit this, the compiler will complain, which we agreed that it is a good thing to do. Uh, folks, why do we have enums? To create a new data type of our own. Yeah, no, here's an example. Integers will suffice to capture the day of a week. Why do we require a new type? If we want to limit what all instance we can create. Why? Why is that good? Yeah, so that, um, for example, if you do int, you can have value 10. Uh, it does not mean anything. Uh, but if you have enum and it is limited, then at compile time, you can say that you can only yes. choose valid Good values. Answer. So this is an example of having a tight representation of your concept. Now, Java supports, so I define a enum called ternary, which takes three values, one, two, and three. And this uh, code snippet is an example of how switch expressions can be used with enums. One of our takeaways from here is there is no default. Uh, so. When we've listed all the possible values, one, two, and three, the compiler no longer uh, forces us to put a default clause, a default case. Uh, folks, can uh, do any of you remember what beans mean in Java? If so, please share. 
you should have public get rent settled for every period. Yes, and not more than that. So on the left hand side is the Java implement I mean, uh, definition of an employee class. In this presentation, I'm going to use a notation where on the left hand side is a type definition on the, on the right hand side is the various properties. This shorthand notation I'll be using to convey some of the concepts in this talk. Uh, folks, here's a simple bean. It has two fields. One of them is a Boolean. Other is that is a ternary enum. So the question is, how many different values can binary an instance of binary ternary can uh, can have? So binary can have two different values. Ternary can have three different values. So how many different values can binary ternary have? Six. Six, correct. Now, if you see the two into three, cardinality of binary into cardinality of ternary is the cardinality of binary ternary. Types like this are called product types. Uh, folks, I guess all of us do shopping on uh, e-commerce sites. How do we pay? What are the options are available? Cash, so we can do UPI, net banking, wallet, I suppose. Yeah, cash, cash on demand. Yeah. Card is also available. Yeah. Yeah, debit card, credit card, so many options are there. But do we typically make payments in more than one kind for uh, at once? No. Only one we'll select, yeah. Okay. So how would we model this in Java? That we have exactly one mode of payment uh, per uh, transaction. If I do something like this, there is no way to enforce that exactly one of them is uh, is required or possible. Factory class with singleton. Again, you're moving the responsibility away from the instrument class to another piece of code, which will ensure that I mean, you need to ensure that all possible instantiations happen via instrument but yeah it is slightly jumping through the hoops i'll propose a different mechanism over here so going back to the notation we can have this notation tells us that there can be exactly one of the possible options Before I jump into code, I'll go back to this. Suppose we have a new type called binary or ternary. Every instance of binary is either a, uh, this is either a binary or a ternary. Can somebody tell me how many different values can this data type have? Five. Five. So it is basically the sum of the cardinality of binary and the cardinality of ternary. This is uh, a reason why these types are called uh, sum types. So Java has introduced a construct called sealed class to model things like this. I'll come back to this in a while. Now, remember we spoke about beans earlier. 
Java has introduced a new um, capability to model beans more elegantly. So this notation, which we discussed early, can map to something as simple as this. So instead of the verbosity of the getters and setters on, on the left-hand side, there is a more succinct representation of this as shown here. Any questions so far? This uh, record is a new keyword. Yes, so new keyword and here's a example of this. So given an em uh, employee object dot ID gives the ID dot name gives the name, but these are immutable constructs. You can't set it post uh, uh, construction. So now I'm coming to one of the key concepts in this presentation. Pattern matching is uh, built on multiple constructs. The, con the concepts of record, sealed class, switch expression, and destructuring. I'll go through all of this one by one. I have a question, sir. Yes. Sir, when you uh, can go back to that code of uh, public record employee, mm -hmm. so uh, this 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 class, uh, which is so, uh, what first thing my first question would be: Is this a class, and is this a constructor of that class? What exactly is it? Enums are classes. Similarly, records are classes. You can have instances of enums. You can have instances of records. So the you have ob objects which are enums, you have objects which are records. So Does that make sense? Different. So how is it different than the normal objects or normal enums? No, no, okay. Better exam question is how are they different from normal classes? Yes, yes. They are objects are immutable. And they have short the shorthand representation to access the fields. So if you have employee here, you require a get name and set name. Yes. If you, if you had a, hold on. Uh, excuse me, uh, before I forget, can I ask some question in the past, for the past thing, what you said? Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, you mentioned about the switch case now with, you know, the expression approach doesn't need to have default. Uh, how does that, you know, requirement go away? I'll come to that. Okay, no problem. Yeah, just, uh, sorry. But I think, uh, that earlier, uh, person was earlier question. Here's one of the differences. And if there's no setter here. Okay, then. Okay. But you can read, obviously you can read. There is a getter yes. function. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we don't get to set the values. We can only set through constructor. They're immutable. Okay. I'll, I mean, yeah, this is one of the uh, uh, use cases, but there are more powerful use cases which I'll talk through in this presentation. Okay. Now going back. What about two string mm -hmm. of something like this? Uh, one second, please. So here, the switch realized that T is an instance of an enum. And there is case for every value of the enum. But what if I just use only two case three? Yeah, I don't put. Then you have to do the default. I can put you. 
So yeah, I mean, uh, okay. So what you are saying is default is not going absolute, but most likely that you know, yeah, if you we use all the case of ternary, then we don't need you. Yes. Got it. Got. It. Thank you. Thank you. Nice clarity. So another question I missed. When we were coding the employee record, right? I just wanted to check on uh, how two string does it automatically generate a two string for it? Or? Uh, please take it off. It's a very simple. I have more things to cover. Okay, cool. But there's one more question which I didn't answer. You mentioned about sealed classes also in this. I didn't get that. Yeah, yeah I'll come to that. I'll come to that. So folks, there are sealed classes and there are sealed interfaces. In this presentation, I'm going to take sealed interfaces. Now, similarly, uh, similar to day of a week, day of a week is either Monday or Tuesday, blah, 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 till Sunday. It can take exactly one of these seven values. Enums are at object level what enums are at class or object level sealed classes provide the same capability at the class level here's an example i am re-implementing list a list is either a none or a linked list i'll come to both of this None has no content, while a link list has a head under tail. The tail is, is another list. So every list object is either a none object or a linked list object, not more, not less. This is a con. This is uh, also called as enumerated classes. In Java, uh, they call them sealed classes or sealed interfaces. This is a parallel implementation for sealed classes, but I've chosen interfaces in this presentation. This is very important. Please spend time to understand this and ask any questions you might have. So by default, list will have object. Now we are restricting that, you know, it is not at object level, but it is either none or linked list. Okay. List is an interface. It can have exactly two implementations, which is none or linked list. That oh. restriction is happened here. Okay, okay. Okay, so now some. Okay, got it. I think somebody cannot extend beyond these two people. Yes. Oh, got it. Oh, now makes sense. Sealed means that one. Okay, it is closed for extension. So just to clarify what uh, Agendra has said, I cannot take list and then uh, create a new interface and extend this. There are some nuances, but that is a high level essence. Okay, okay. Okay, folks. Here you saw switch with the Java in. Here you're seeing switch with a sealed class or an enumerated type. So each instance of a type list is either a none or a linked list. Again, I want you to watch. There is no default here.
I'll build up on this, but I want you to take a few minutes and understand this. This is one of the essence of the this presentation. So we're defining a method called match, which takes two arguments, a supplier of type F or something which converts uh, a tuple of E and a list and converts it to a F. So when there is none, you invoke the supplier and return the value. If not, you apply this on the head of the list on the tail of a list. So folks, uh, this allows some very powerful way of writing code. Here's an example of a size function. It tries to, uh, it finds thus the number of elements in a list. So here is, you're saying list dot match. If there is none, return zero. If there is a head and a tail, return one corresponding to the he, uh, head and uh, append add that to the size of a tail. Can so, you please again repeat this one? You said list dot match. I didn't get it. The list can either be a none or a yes, linked list. list. Yes. If it is a none, the size is zero. If it is a linked list, which has at least one element, it is one corresponding to the head of the linked list and the size of a tail. Okay. Now uh, I have a small test function which creates a list of three. And here's the. I'll run this. Yeah. Now, please compare this with how you would have returned done using the for loop. This is a one liner which does the equivalent. Any questions so far? So the uh, in the sealed is meant for you know uh, what I understand is you know replicating enumerations uh, which are at object level to class level. And uh, other thing I'm not able to get it, maybe I should read more. That, you know, uh, instead of final, um, I mean, see, I can use the same final and abstract classes and can I achieve something similar to sealed, but may not be it is concise or clear. Is that the understanding? Oh, uh, okay. Folks, can you see my screen? This is my medium post. 
yeah this is the uh, older version of implementing the same constructs so you can have a, a interface you can have a, a implementations you can match you can do the default there's a more verbose way if you don't use seal classes it is possible but the sealed class uh, along with records give us a more concise way of representing this sure thank you uh, folks i really want you to spend a few minutes and make sure you get this now i wanted to highlight one more thing link list was a record which had two fields the head and the tail here java has opened up a record and is given the two the two uh, fields instead of doing Uh, taking a, a link list instance and do, doing a dot head and dot tail, it has opened up and given us uh, access to the internals of a link list, which allowed this concise representation, which is seen on line thirteen here. so earlier in this uh, conversation we spoke about records right this is one of the benefits which so, element it will give if the list has got multiple elements if a list has multiple uh, if a link list a link list link basically it. has two elements which is the head the data contained in the head and the tail Okay, okay. They, actually, it is not a collection, but yeah, it is just you know record of two. Okay, got it. This is not the Java uh, collections link list. This is a custom implementation. Got it. Okay. So, it not only so given an object, Java will check if it is of type none or type link list. If it is type link link list, it identifies the field with the head and tail, and here. in the case statement you can deal with the head and the tail instead of doing link list dot head link list dot tail this opening up of uh, an object and accessing its field this is called destructuring in the functional programming world that function dot apply seems more of like a javascript kind of uh, programming Uh, it is a functional way of doing it. It says, I mean, like what? Is, uh, uh, so these head and tail are the attributes of link list, right? These head and tail are attributes of a link list, but you also you also have a by function, which takes an element of type E, a list of type E. and converts these two into a type f so a good example is size head is converted to zero i mean uh, empty uh, uh, none is converted to zero head is converted to one and tail is converted to size of tail on top of so there is a sealed interface there is switch expression there are records here and there is destructuring here all of these so would destructuring would destructuring apply only to record classes or you know if i have normal class all i don't think you can de destructure normal classes okay fine 
so lines 11 to 12 is uh, pattern matching with java provides out of the box i have implemented a wrapper around this and we saw an example of this okay hold on. here Folks, now is a good time to ask more questions. I'll move to more advanced concepts after this. So the first argument to match, uh, you call that supplier, is it? Yes. You can, you can pass a supplier or you can pass a value itself as well. But here we see two components, bracket, arrow, zero. Yeah, it's a supplier. Supplier okay. allows lazy initialization. This is also a valid code. Here, we did eager. Uh, here, this is actually a compute. Only if the object was a none will the supplier dot get be invoked. But here, the computation might have happened beforehand. Did you get that, Arvind? Yeah, yeah. But you can do the same thing using match one as well. So I can do a match one. This is still fine. Here we're just returning values, but sometimes we may have to do more uh, detailed computations. That is why a supplier will help. Uh, folks, if you have no more questions so far, I'll proceed to our next uh, more advanced concepts. And can you show the linked list class once? This is a linked list class. Okay, thanks. Uh, folks, I assume all of us are familiar with MapReduce paradigm. Yes, no? Yes, yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. I... Now, while uh, tools like Hadoop talk about mapping a file, lists themselves can be mapped. Lines 23 to 25 is an example of this. If a list is empty, return a new list. If not, apply a function of, okay, let me draw. yeah. If a list has variables, X, I mean uh, values X, Y, and Z, uh, Z map will return a new list which takes f of x which has f of x f of y f of z as the result so here's an example given a list of uh, integers, I create a new list where you append one, add one to each of the elements. So original list had one, two, three. The new list had two, three, four. This was implemented by another one liner here. Uh, folks, 
the map function is defined in the list class itself. This is one of the flavors. Again, this is a one liner. If it is none, return none, none. If there is a head, apply this on the head. And uh, apply the map function on the tail and combine these two. So this is a the implementation of the map capability. The reduce in map is known by another term called fold in the functional programming world. Fold is, yeah. So if you have one, two, three, four, five, when you fold with the addition, it is equivalent to zero plus one, the, that thing to two, one, three, and blah, blah, blah. So here you have a test class which does a fold on the same one, two, three, the result is six. Here's a one liner of fold. I'll move to the next concept of a flat map. Consider a list of uh, households. Household one has ABC. Household two has uh, DEF. Household three has GHE. Now we want to have all of the uh, household members in a single list. So you have household one, household two, household three as in a list. We want to get a new list which has, which maps the house to the household members and use a list of them. This is implemented in a two-step manner. We implement what's called a concatenate function. Given one list and another list, join these two and give them in uh, and give give a new list. This is basically, I think, the plus operator in Python. And if you see again, this is a one liner to concatenate two lists. And once you have the concatenate available, flat map is a two liner, or you can even further. make this into a one liner. So flat map is a one liner and here's a small test function. So given a list, each list will create a, will, each list member will map to a new list of size two. So a list of size three will map to a list of size six. So folks, going back, map reduce, which was the heart of Hadoop, was realized in two lines. Or maybe we'd say, yeah, two lines over here. This is the power of function programming and Java has given us tools to do something like this in a uh, this powerful mechanism in a very um, concise manner. I'll pause and take questions. So yeah, this is Arvind here. See, and uh, functional programming people will normally go to Scala. If mm -hmm. they want to achieve functional programming in Java, you are saying these are the tools that we can use. So Scala had, uh, I think, lambdas before Java. Java, I mean, Scala has sealed classes before Java. 
So Java is catching up with Scala by introducing more and more of these functional capabilities. In so Scala, there is a, a specific library, Zio library, which basically uh, encompasses almost uh, like which is basically way uh, ahead, I think, uh, when it comes to functional programming. It has its own uh, syntaxes at times, which differs from the normal Scala uh, programming. But I see uh, that very efficient. Do you have any insight on that? I'm not familiar with this, uh, what you mentioned, but the takeaway here is Java 8 introduces lambdas and method references, which allow things like uh, stream.map, stream.reduce and so on. Now with switch expressions, with sealed classes, with record types and destructuring, these capabilities are now uh, more of the capabilities available in Java. You don't need to go to Scala just to do things like this, which is the, the premise of this talk. So I want to come back to this match function. Mm -hmm. So all these one-liners are using this max match function. So I'm trying to understand still what is the purpose of that match function? What is it doing? It is, why is it called ma match? Why is it is called true. match? Is it matching uh, the types none and linked list? Okay. If you look at lines 11 to 14, this is Java's inter uh, uh, flavor of pattern matching. You need to do a switch. You need to do case and things like the class none and class link list. You have references on line 12 and line 13. But if you use a wrapper function, which I have implemented, you neither have a reference to none or link list here. You only deal with the uh, destructured fields. This head is of type E, and this tail is of type tail uh, uh, list E. Both none and, and the linked list are, she, are uh, abstracted away by the match function. So if you talk to other people who are aware of these concepts, their interpretation of pattern matching will be this. I have provided a even more succinct and a more functional programming way of doing the same. Okay, okay, got it. I was under the impression earlier that since you applied that, uh, since you have implemented that match function, that is why we can use that uh, one liner uh, which you showed. No, it will become three liners if you don't do the, the way I did it. So Arvind, how you would write the equivalent code in say Haskell. Haskell provides even more richer functional pro I mean pattern matching syntax. This wrapper function takes us closer to a Haskell way than the Scala way of doing pattern matching. See, this is closer to what Scala would do. Instead of a switch in Java, they use the word match. They have a case, case, case. There is destructuring and they do the same.
yeah thank you yeah clear now So folks, I took one uh, algebra, okay. Some, we spoke about two different types, a product type and a sum type. You define types as a sum of products. and you pattern match over them. So each case will refer to one of the sums and the destructured value will refer to the contained data, head and tail. So anything which can be expressed in sum of products notation can be pattern match similarly. So you can define option or optional as a sum of none or E. You can define it either as a sum of left or right types. You can define a binary tree as either a none or it has at least one element with two with the left child and the right child. You can have a try where it is a sum of either E or a runtime exception. These are examples of reusable and domain agnostic sum types. So if you define option as a using a record type and a sealed class, and you have a switch for a, uh, option and then you have a wrapper function, wrapper match function. The way you, you did it for a list, you can do it for an option, you can do it for either a binary tree, a try, and so on. You can have a map on an either, you can have a fold on an option, all of this can be built. So finding the number of elements in a tree, finding the max elements in a, a max element in a tree, all of those code can be written in one-liners similar to what I demonstrated in this uh, talk slash demo. Now, these are reusable pieces. Remember how, how I spoke about uh, payment. So you can define an instrument which permits cash, credit card, and UPI. Each of these three can be records. And similarly, you can have pattern matching on the instrument level. So how do you charge a credit card? Maybe different from how do you charge an UPI? How do you reverse a cash transaction? Maybe different from how you reverse a, a UPI payment. Fraud detection for each of these can be different. So if you had a instrument, a um, pattern matching on instrument, the way we had a map method, you had a fold method, you had a flat map method, you will have charge method, you will have rollback method, you will have uh, uh, fraud detection methods on the instrument class. And because of the exhaustive listing saying that, um, if I omit this, Java will complain or should, yeah, it's complaining. This will ensure that every possible uh, implementation or flavor has to be handled so there is similar to the type safety we discussed early in the presentation. This gives you concise, but elaborate. It covers all possible scenarios. 
this will reduce the amount of bugs that can enter your code so not just uh, reusable constructs the same thing can be applied at business slash domain level so functional programming is a good way of modeling domains as well that is another takeaway i want you folks to have from this presentation questions anyone yeah here uh, this match function again uh, now you give an example of uh, three possible ways of transactions cash yes. or yeah. uh, credit card yes. and upi mm -hmm. so this now this match function will have three arguments yes the match function for instrument will have three arguments okay okay and if you pass less than 3 the compiler will comply so accidental mistakes are reduced folks any more questions uh are you also sharing uh, this demo code as well Somewhere yes, the there is a link in the. I have, I have created a public GitHub repo. You can look at. It. Thank you. Any further questions from yeah. others? Nagendra, Ral, Ramanathan. Oh, we are good. I am good. Can you post that link if you don't mind? Um, that would be much better. Yeah, in the Q and A, this link is there. If you just open up the Q and A, there you will find link to the slides. But uh, this link will also be available on the YouTube channel once uh, this video goes online. Okay. Next couple of hours, it will be online. Okay. That is, uh, you go to YouTube, search for Devopedia, mm -hmm. you'll get the channel. Sure. So, folks, functional programming is a way of doing a lot more. doing more with less with higher trust and java from 8 to 20 has has been incrementally giving us features to to do this <laughs>